Okay, so you've heard about climate change and that's a big deal. But what is it really about? And what can you actually do about it? This video is a simple pragmatic summary of climate change. I will cut through the noise and confusion and focus on the basic facts so you can figure out how to help, okay? Good news, bad news, so here's the situation. The climate is kind of broken and we're in trouble because, well, we're stuck on this one planet so our lives depend on it. The good news is that scientists have figured out the cause of the problem, us. We humans broke it, yup. But wait, wait, how is that good news? Well, because it proves that we humans are powerful enough to actually impact the Earth's climate, which means we can fix it. Well, partly at least, but before we get to the solutions, let's examine the problem a bit. What is the problem? Here's our planet. For a thousand of years, our average surface temperature has been mostly stable. But now, just the past few decades, it has chewed up. We call this global warming because, well, that's exactly what it is. But wait, a few degrees warmer, who cares, right? It's a global average. You might not even notice the difference. Well, actually, it has nasty consequences. Why is it bad? When oceans get hotter, they expand, so sea level rises. The heat also melts ice and glaciers, sitting on land in places like Greenland and Antarctica, which raises sea levels even further. This rapid change destabilizes the climate. We get flooding, extreme rainfall, extreme storms, a lot of destruction. Other places get extreme drought, which kills corpses and causes starvation as well. We get heat waves, wildfires, and water shortages. It's like we're passengers on a leaking boat. No matter where the hole is, it's still everyone's problem. Don't panic. As this drama unfolds, how do we react? Some react with denial, some with panic, or shame, or blame. But none of that helps solve the problem, so let's skip that. What does help is doing something. At the very least, it feels better than just worrying. Now, the first step towards solving any problem is to understand its cause. So let's talk about that. So what's causing it? Here is our atmosphere otherwise known as the sky. You've probably heard of the greenhouse effect. Sunlight continuously hit our planet and reflects back out, but greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane capture some of that energy and keep it in, like a blanket. That's a good thing actually because otherwise the entire earth would be a frozen ball of ice and you would be a popsicle. These gases have been pretty consistent for thousands of years giving us a stable climate and enabling convenient things like well human civilization. But during the past 50 years or so, carbon dioxide concentration has suddenly increased by 40%. Hmm, rising CO2 levels, rising temperature. Coincidence? No, turns out this is the main cause of global warming. Why is CO2 increasing? So why is carbon dioxide increasing? All living things are made of carbon. Carbon is neither created nor destroyed. It just cycles around our biosphere as plants and animals live, breathe, and die. So what's with all the extra carbon? Where the heck is that coming from? It all started a century and a half ago when we discovered a really neat party trick. Dig up coal and oil and gas and use it to fuel cars and produce electricity. Wow, these are known as fossil fuels because well, they come from fossils, buried carbon for organisms that died millions of years ago. When we dig it up and burn it, we get lots of energy all at once. Great, but a side effect is that we also get carbon dioxide gas. Note an important distinction here. Non-fossil fuels, like burning a tree, does not add carbon dioxide to our system as long as a new tree grows to replace it. That carbon was already in our biosphere. It is renewable. However, fossil fuels do add carbon dioxide to our system because we dig it up and don't dig it back down again. 
And so, every year we end up adding about 50 billion tons of greenhouse gases to our atmosphere and about 70% of that is carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels, mostly coal and oil. And it keeps going up because of more people using more energy. Why is it accelerating? Unfortunately, climate change is happening faster than even the most pessimistic climate scientists expected. Why? Because of so-called positive feedback, which by the way, isn't nearly as positive as it sounds. The biggest feedback loop is water vapor. Hotter oceans cause more evaporation and water vapor is actually also a greenhouse gas, so that causes further global warming. The second feedback loop is the reduced of ice covers. Ice reflects sunlight. When the ice covers melts away, more surface is exposed and more heat is sucked in and global warming then increases. Lastly, permafrost. Large parts of Siberia, Greenland, Canada, and Alaska are covered in permafrost. Turns out, this frozen soil contains lots of greenhouse gases. When it thaws and the buried gases are released, causing even more global warming. So climate change is accelerating because of these three vicious cycles. It all works together like some kind of evil scheme from a villain movie. These feedback loops are also impossible to stop, which is why we need to tackle the root cause. Where are all the greenhouse gases coming from? Since burning fossil fuels is the primary cause of global warming, we need to stop burning fossil fuels. So wait, why are we burning this stuff again? We burn it in power plants to generate electricity. We burn it inside cars and planes to drive them around. We burn it in factories to produce stuff. See the chimneys, exhaust pipes, smoke, that's a hint. All this accounts for about two thirds of the 50 billion tons. And by the way, that smoke is deadly poisonous. So we kinda want to get rid of it anyway. Here's the most fascinating thing. The fossil fuels industry is subsidized. Government around the world spend about half a trillion dollars per year. 1% of the global GDP financially supporting the very thing that's killing us. Clearly change is needed. So what? Are we going to erase 200 years of progress? Back to candles and horses? No, of course not. Cause we have grown really fond of electricity and transport, so that's not going away. We just need to solve it without burning fossil fuels. And the good news is that we don't even need to burn it anymore. Clean electricity. Instead of coal and oil, we can use solar panels and wind turbines to generate the same electricity without screwing up the climate. This used to be expensive and ineffective, but the technology has finally caught up. Now, solar and wind is often more cost effective than coal and oil, even without taking climate impact into account. Of course, we need energy even when the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing. So, the next big challenge is energy storage. But battery technology and other storage solutions are catching up fast. And added bonus to all this is that all countries have free access to sun and wind. It is basically democratized energy, so less need for countries to bicker with each other over unevenly distributed oil reserves and gas pipelines and stuff. Of course, we have other non-fossil energy alternatives too. Nuclear, which of course carries its own risks and challenges. Hydro, biofuel, geothermal, from a global warming perspective, Anything is better than burning fossil fuels. Renewable energy is spreading fast, but globally about 80% of our energy is still based on fossil fuels. So we gotta keep that ball moving. Clean transport. What about transport then? Transport accounts for about 14% of all emissions and three quarters of that is from fuel cars, including trucks and buses, oil power plant on wheels. They are worse than planes only because there are so many more of them. But now we have electric cars, plug it in and charge it up just like you do with your phone. Range used to be a problem, but now some electric cars can go over 500 kilometers on one charge, and by then, you will need a break anyway. They are still pretty expensive, but prices are coming down fast. 
Of course, an electric car is only as clean as the electricity it uses. But the difference is that a fuel car will stay dirty forever, while an electric car gets cleaner automatically as the power grid gets cleaner. To wrap up, see the pattern. There are lots of ways you can help reduce global warming. You may even totally disagree with some of these actions and that's fine. Think of this of levers you can pull. You decide what you are willing to do and what you think will make an impact. This atmosphere is the only one we have caught. It's shared by all countries. So no matter where you are or what you do, every time counts. Recommendations of appropriate measures. Firstly, all nations need to establish a climate change research entity to gather information and intelligence on specific type of climate change that is occurring in their jurisdiction. Only with information can a nation take the necessary steps to make a difference. After this, the government should incorporate a federal entity whereby it is given the authority and resources to coordinate all climate change issues and to support the climate change research entity. By doing so, nations can understand climate change better and move towards a better alternative. Besides that, countries can start the initiative to move towards clean and renewable energies such as solar, hydro and others that was mentioned earlier. The government of all other nations need to allocate resources to explore and improve renewable energies as a main source for the nation. Lastly, as climate change is a very serious issue and it will only get worse, the United Nations should make it mandatory for all its members to be a signatory and to ratify all treaties and conventions pertaining to the protection of the environment. This means all members must sign the said treaties and will be given a reasonable time period to ratify the said treaties into their own respective laws. If they fail to do that, the UN should impose harsh economic sanctions to all nations that fails to comply. By doing so, each nation, despite their capabilities and political agendas, will have no choice but to abide by all these laws and to protect the environment. The environment is not going to get any better unless something drastic is done. It is going to take all nations on this earth to significantly make a difference. 